Alright, well I guess I am using the default camera mic and these are going to be some of the last videos I make before my vacation and before I hopefully um, strike out into <clears throat> another brand of content that is, with any luck, more um, successful I guess than what I've already got. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting because I've been making these driving to and from videos now um, since actually, what would it be, November of last year. So I decided I was going to do this around November of last year and I started recording these videos and it has slowly but surely kind of spiraled into a place where I am now um, losing grounds. I started out several months ahead of myself and I'm gonna go on vacation and hopefully upload enough videos to catch up with where I've recorded and then kind of get a lay of the land there. I was initially hoping that by this time I would actually be done with this project and had I have actually followed the um, video schedule I had set forth for myself that may actually have been doable because if I do the math I started in November and I recorded all through December and then January, February, March, April and so that's four, five, that's six months right there. And if I recorded two videos a day for six months accurately, I'm still on the billboard. I'm a little worried that I'm gonna have to like pay these people another month, but I don't think I should have to. I think it's because I started on February 19th and I did a three month program. So February 19th to, um, let's see, February 19th to March 19th, March 19th to April 19th, April 19th to May 19th. So I think I'm good because I've definitely submitted three payments to them. But anyway, from um, November to April is six months. And the hope would be that um, I would get to be done with having to do this by then. But the reality is I have not kept up at all with my upload frequency. I was supposed to be doing two videos a day, at least, driving to and from work. And then from there, I was going to do, um, and then from there, I was going to do two, two videos at least on the weekend too. I was supposed to do a lot more on the weekend than I have been doing. And I just haven't done anything on the weekends. And then um, combine that with just a lot of missed days. Like the entire time we were on vacation, I didn't film a single. I filmed two videos over the like week worth of vacation that I took. And so that was a whole week missed. But then there's just been miscellaneous days here and there where the camera's dead or I'm just not feeling it and I don't record anything and then um, I haven't done anything on a weekend in a very long time. In fact, the closest thing I've done on a weekend is I've started a whole brand new project and I'm going to be trying to do something with that here very soon. And then um, hopefully I am able to just knock out a lot of stuff and get some major progress done over this vacation time. Uh, I have a lot of stuff set out for myself to do over the course of this vacation and I'm hoping that I can get a good enough chunk of it done that I feel good. There's nothing worse than coming off a of vacation and just feeling like you didn't get anything accomplished and that's absolutely not what I want when I get off of this vacation to be like, oh, what did I do? I did a whole lot of nothing. And so hopefully I can get enough done to where I feel good about my progress and I feel good about what I accomplished. And we can 
um, continue to make strides in the right direction. The goals are to record a decent amount of like better structured essay type videos, get a good amount of um, what we're looking for, like uh, stock footage to use, and um, put together these new kind of videos for my other channel that I'm about to start and really start to try and get some better structure going. I have um, ideas, thoughts, and theories about what I can do on Instagram as well, and those are all well and good, except Instagram, I feel like it's dead to me at this point. I upload something and it just goes into a field of nothing. No one notices it, and I'm just kind of stuck. And so, Hopefully, with any luck, I will be able to get out of that rut and start moving towards something um, better. I don't know if I'm going to abandon my stance on Instagram or not. It's unfortunate because I've had a pretty good run from the summer of 22 up until now. So almost a two-year run on there. And so to just give up on it feels like a crime when I've been at it for two weeks, for two years. But like, when you've been at it for two years and you upload a video and it gets 30 views, that's a pretty, like, lame feeling. Like, there's no good way to feel about that. And so now I'm stuck here trying to figure out what am I going to do. Like, am I going to just say the heck with it and not do anything? Am I going to continue to waste my time throwing stuff into the void? Because that's what I feel like I'm doing at this point, is wasting my time. Or am I going to maybe find some other inspiration on there? I don't know. But I am having a heck of a go at things right now, and I'm really trying and hoping that I can figure something out that works on that platform. Or at the very least, I can figure something out that works on YouTube. I think YouTube is by far the preferred platform. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, just in general, about social media. I am not a huge social media fan. I especially don't like the post-generated um, social medias where like they're driven by people posting like text-heavy things or anything like that. Um, a writing friend of mine highly suggested Twitter since it's a written media. And they wanted, they were like, you gotta get on there, you gotta get on there, you gotta get on there. But it is like, the social medias tend to gravitate towards other things. So like, um, Twitter for example is very political. A lot of Twitter is just politics. And, um, I'm not a political person at all. I don't believe in American politics. So I don't want really anything to do with that platform. I liked Instagram because it was a visual platform. Like, back in the day, like, all you did was post pictures to Instagram. And that still ranks true to a point, but there's a lot more, like, it's a lot more real-centric now than it is picture-centric. And so, like, like... It's, I, it hasn't completely soiled itself to me, but it has, it isn't what I remember it being, if that makes sense. And then there's, of course, the classic good old Facebook, which is kind of the combination of both. You get pictures, you get posts, you can do whatever you want with it. And I'll probably never delete Facebook just because, like, Facebook is Facebook at this point. It's like having Google, I guess. But I also don't use it very often. Like, it is very seldom that I decide to post something on there and um, versus on uh, Instagram where I'm posting more regularly to try and gain some sort of following or some sort of bigger understanding. But when I was talking to this friend, I was basically telling him I'm not a big fan of social media. Like, I don't, like, I especially don't like the post-driven social media top who I was supposed to get money from the bank and I completely forgot and I should hit up an ATM before getting into work today. And 
don't know where the nearest one is. I know where several of them are, but not the nearest one. There's one right on my way out of town from home. I wish I wouldn't have forgotten to do that. So now I'm going to have to go out of my way and go get it. But at any rate, um, don't let me forget to get money from the bank, you guys. I, um, but yeah, so being not a big fan of the social media game makes it hard to market yourself on social media. But at the same time, like, I feel like it's hard to succeed in this day and age without it. Um, I am trying a lot harder to build more of a local presence for myself to become more of a household name. Because I look at, like, locally, the market of people that are at my disposal, and it's plenty enough. Like, if I could just market to a fraction of the people in the town that I work in, like, that would be enough. And so, the hope here is that I can kind of leverage the best of both worlds and, like, become locally popular and also become, like, globally popular or not even globally popular. I don't need to be this massive Logan Paul of a success story. I just need to be successful enough with my online endeavors that I can have my time back because right now I'm not successful at, at it at all and I'm working full time and although I don't loathe my job, I would like nothing more than to just have my time back. Being on somebody else's time and being tied to their time and their expectations and having to deal with so many things that I really feel like I shouldn't have to deal with or like people or things that for no reason should I have to deal with and like I could very easily if it got that bad just leave like I am fortunate enough that I'm in a life situation where I am not at all financially tied to this job I'm making good money and it is allowing me to pursue my creative endeavors to the extent in which I am allowed to pursue them but that is not um, to say that I could not live off of like a McDonald's paycheck, for example. Um, I did, there's a mathematical equation to figure out what your minimal um, amount of like, what's your minimal viable salary. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but like the, the smallest amount of money you can make and survive off of. And when I did that equation, the amount of money that I came up with was less than uh, minimum wage. And so I was like, I could, at this point, get some dead-end minimum wage job, work within walking distance from my house, and make it. I wouldn't have the kind of financial flexibility that I have now. I wouldn't have the sort of... Um, freedom to spend money like I do now, but I also wouldn't have as much stress, as much time commitments and all of that. And so the hope is to get somewhere online that um, allows me to get that time back. Um, the reality is I probably will not be leaving my job anytime soon. I would have to make like an incredible amount of money doing online stuff for me to seriously consider stepping away from the day job because like there's something to be said about like if I can balance both for a little while if I can do my day job and balance a YouTube existence or an online content creator existence whatever you want to call it then why not do that for as long as humanly possible so that I can reap the rewards of both and someone I've watched so many business related videos and how to succeed and all these things. And someone once said not to quit your, your day job until it is affecting your ability to do your other job. And so like if I were getting to the point where I was making a similar amount of money at my day job than I am here um, in, in my, or if I were making a similar amount of money on these online adventures as I am at my day job, then you keep the two going until one is interfering with the other. And so like if my commitments at work are 
gaining my way of my commitments online, and obviously online is the preferred product, that's when you start thinking about, okay, is it time to um, call it a day, so to speak? And so I don't know um, at this point in time what any of that is or says or is going to be, but um, I just hope that at some point in time I am able to get where I need to be from it. And it would feel great to be able to do that. And I hope that at some point in time I do. I feel like another thing, I'm getting closer and closer to 30, and 30 feels old and past the point of being able to succeed, if that makes any sense. But um, I also feel like uh, I, I see enough posts and stuff about people being successful past 30 that it's not that much of an ordeal for me. It's just kind of like, okay, well, I can be successful past 40, or past 30, but there are a lot of people who don't reach a significant level of success until 30. And so, like, assuming, because a lot of these things take time and effort, and you have to put time and effort into these things. Assuming that I have, I had been seriously pursuing these things since I was 20, then I would have a decade's worth of time and effort spent on this thing that I'm doing. And that's not the reality. And like, um, the longest streak I have right now is writing. I have published a book now every year for the past four years. I technically missed 23, but I published two books in 22, so I'm going to count that. But the reality of the situation is I now have four years under my belt in that regards. And I feel like I can confidently say that my writing has greatly improved in this time. Like, I put something out these days, and I'm like, that was a good, solid product. And I can't always say that with everything that I've done. And so the hope here is that I can, um, I can get to a point where, okay, I've mastered the craft and now I need to start spreading my wings and figuring out how to get people interested in the craft. And there's a whole lot of ways to do that. You get them hooked on you so that anything you do, they're interested in or you get them hooked on the craft because they love the craft so much that they're interested in that. Um, the difficult thing is that I write fiction and a lot of people online and in the world in general really, really, really like for people to have um, published non-fiction work and they feel like non-fiction is more profitable and to an extent it probably is, but it's just not my idea of work. Um, I do have at least two thoughts on like nonfiction work that I might put out in the world. Um, but one of which is more or less my philosophies on the world and not like, are my philosophies fiction or nonfiction? That's hard to define, isn't it? But I would advertise it as a non-fiction novel because in my mind, it is not my philosophies on the world are not fiction, they are the truth. And so, I don't even know how to go about formatting a book like that. Um, I don't know how to organize my thoughts. It's, it's weird to be that foreign with a written um, with a written media of any sort because I just, I don't know, I, um, I have become so familiar with the written world that I just don't, I can't think about what I'm not doing or what I am doing. I don't even know if I'm organizing my thoughts properly right now, but like, 
I have become so familiar with writing, at least from a fictional standpoint, that to be that puzzled with any kind of writing is not comfortable for me. And so we'll see what um, what that what that becomes. The essential thing here is like once I finish this current book, I'm going to pick up my next. Uh, work in the in this fantasy novel that I've been working on, and I need to finish it out. I need to write it, and I need to finish it. And so, from that perspective, I need to. Um, once my brother Kanan's done, I'm going back to this fantasy book, and then once that's done, then I'm kind of clear to start the next thing. And the next thing for me could be any multitude of things. I have so many projects written projects at least that I'm balancing. I have the next book in the If Ghosts Could Cry universe. I have the next book in My Brother Kanan's universe. I have the next book in or just an original book concept. And I have this nonfiction book concept. So I technically have four books that I'm like ramping up to release. If I can finish the epic fantasy novel this year and at least get the first draft done this year, then I can move and knock out two, hopefully, two books in 25, two more in 26, and then I will have caught up with those. And that's assuming that I don't acquire any more projects or ideas from now until 2026, which is a very unlikely assumption to make. Like, the likelihood of me not doing something different and or new from then to now is unlikely. Um, so hopefully we get to where we're going. Hopefully I experience the success that I'm wanting and or needing to experience and we can kind of go from there. I don't know what else to say or what else needs to be said. I'm hoping that we get to a point where I can I can experience my success and I can get my time back and I can walk away from from the day to day. And like I'm not expecting wealth and incredible riches, but just a livable income. And that's going to be, like I said, that, I feel like it's going to be the hardest part. When I get to the point where I start succeeding online and I start making online money, deciding when to pull the plug on what I've dedicated my life to now for seven years and have established myself in. Do I pull the plug on that? Or do I keep it going as long as I possibly can? I think the latter is definitely what I'm going to lean towards. I'm going to keep them both going as long as I possibly can. If I get to a point where I'm making decent money on YouTube and I'm still making my main job money, then yeah, I will probably balance the two as best I can for as long as I can. Just because the, the, the power that I gain from that is, is immense. But... At any rate, this has been a long and interesting conversation. This is video one of two of before me going on vacation, and I'm hoping my post-vacation videos will be substantially different than the ones that I have been making so far. So thank you all for watching thus far, and I hope we can keep things interesting.